Oh, good morning. It is a cool 27 degrees. I'm tired of that little orange light. So I'm headed over to Dave Walter to see what it takes to shut it up. And it is just beautiful. Very cold, but we got a little bit of snow overnight. Absolutely stunning out here. All right, guys, it's 1.27 p.m. Um, I had the car in Dave Walter today from 9.30 until noon. Uh, essentially, I have to have this thing e-checked in March. The last time I e-checked it, good, I am recording. Had to check. The last time I e-checked it was, well, I actually, I've never e-checked it. The previous owner had it e-checked, which you, some of you may not even know what that means. I think it's, I don't know if it's a federal law, but in the state of Ohio, every time you renew your registration on a vehicle, every year on your birthday, this is still registered in my dad's name, so on March, it has to be re-registered. You get a new tag to put on your license plate. Well, when you do that, you have to have your car e-checked, or I think it's environmental or emissions check. Emissions check, that's what it is. They pretty much stick a sensor in your exhaust that sees what kind of pollutants are coming out and makes sure, and makes sure that it's safe to be on the road and it's not polluting the environment more than it's going to have to. Well. Um, I got the thing in the mail, and it says right on the form that they send you, uh, if your check engine is light, if your check engine light is on, don't even bother bringing it in. We will not pass it. So I have a couple options. I can do what the previous owner of this car did since the light came on in 2005, and just go into Dave Walter on your way to have it e-checked and pay him $150 to reset the light and turn it off, and then it'll be off for a day. So you better hurry up and get over there to the e-check place and have them do it while the light's off or I can pay what it costs and just turn the freaking light off that's been on since September 2005. Um, I, I know what the code was. It's code 170 secondary air filter. I never really looked into what it was going to cost to have it fixed. I asked if it was important to the health of the vehicle. They said not really. It's just emission stuff. Uh, so I never bothered. Well, I had them diagnose it today. There's 11 fault codes four of which are misfires due to uh, the left cylinder bank. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a pump in the fuel tank that um, pressurizes the fuel tank every time you turn on the engine. If it loses pressure, then it knows there's a leak somewhere in the fuel tank. That's mandated by the EPA. Any car since 1997 has that, has that, has that um, pump. Well, my pump gave out a couple months ago after you know 12 years of usage and 157,373 miles. So I need a new pump. That's not bad. It's only $383. So that'll fix one of the fault codes. Then um, there's a lot of carbon buildup inside the left cylinder bank. Every time you cold start the engine, it runs a test to see if it can pass something through those channels, and if there's too much carbon, it can't. Well, that was last fixed in 2007. The engine was pulled out, and they ran wire brushes through the whole engine. They also replaced the clutch in 2007. That was like a $6,000 service to pull the engine out, replace the clutch, and clean the carbon out. Well, I don't want to do that. So there's plan B, which is, I'm sorry, this is a really long clip. Plan B is to um, take the fuel lines out of the gas tank and put them in a solution that pumps a solution through the engine at a very high temperature that could quite possibly burn the carbon out of there and clean it. So I'm going to do that. This car is going back to Dave Walter next Tuesday. It'll probably have it for about a week. And they're going to try that. That should fix the majority of the problems. After that, I'm going to replace all eight spark plugs, which is $700. They've never been replaced. They're supposed to be replaced every 60,000 miles. This has nearly 160, so it's definitely time for them to be replaced, as well as the oxygen sensors. So this whole thing is going to be like $4,000 to replace what this needs, and there's no guarantee that's going to fix my carbon problem. Uh, the only way to get, fix it for sure is to pull the engine out, which I said before I don't want to do. So. Hopefully uh, that'll fix that. The spark plugs will fix the misfires in the left cylinder bank of four cylinders um, because the spark plugs are just too old. I mean, how, how long do you expect spark plugs to last? They're not going to go forever. I understand that. And I'm very surprised that the previous owner, as good a care as he took of this car, never bothered to replace the spark plugs. So we'll get that done next week. Yeah, those O2 sensors are pretty expensive, though. There's two before the catalytic converters and then two after the cats. Um, and there, for, there's, so there's four. The four um, O2 sensors are going to be like $600 or something crazy like that. 
the spark plugs, 700 installed. I would do them myself, but they're back so far in the engine. BMW puts their engines down as low as possible, and mine's be behind the front axle. It's technically a mid-mounted engine. There's no way I can get in there and do that myself. So I asked why these sensors are failing, why there's so much carbon, is something wrong with the engine, what's causing this? He explained it to me in like 15 minutes. He spent the first five minutes talking about 90% of why this happens is because of the fuel. This car was built to run on German gasoline. On German gasoline, everything's fine. You come over to the United States, we have shit gasoline. It's not clean, it's not pure, it doesn't burn right. You get way too much carbon out of it. So that's why you get carbon built up, build up that screw up the sensors and cause all these problems and cost all this money. So American gas is garbage. And I always use Shell V-Power 93 octane gas, which is as good as you can get in this country. And the previous owner used the same thing. So. That's not our fault. Then he spent the next 10 minutes talking about how the car is driven. He bawled me out for the way I drive it. He said, this engine is supposed to be driven hard. It's the S62 V8. They took the M62 V8, which was 4.4 liters. They added 0.55 liters of compression, so it's 4.95 liters. Uh, they added 118 horsepower to it. It's built to be driven hard, and I don't really drive it hard. And he told, he kind of explained that it needs to be pushed. It needs to be uh, bring it up, to, brought up to high RPM. You need to push this engine to blow the carbon out of there. You cannot baby it. So we'll try it. Second gear without exceeding the speed limit. And there's 40. It's still very beautiful here. It's uh, just at 27 degrees now. We've actually got some sun out there. Uh, that there's way too much salt on the roads. This absolutely sucks. But I'm not gonna complain yet, because it's very pretty. It's really annoying the way that car is put together. Everything is just jam-packed, and it's built so well, it's impossible to service when it needs service, because of crap American gas. Yeah, there's the spark plugs, replace. Okay, I was wrong on the prices, 423.62. Here's that pump in the fuel, or that pump in the fuel tank, 308.55 plus tax and shop fees. That's 163 labor and 145 parts. Oxygen sensors, 692.94. They're going to attempt to remove the carbon from the secondary air filter system. Parts, 30 bucks for the fluid, $544 in labor, $574.50 plus tax and shop fees. Here's today, the diagnosis of $115.98. Did the check engine light, pulled all the codes. And here are the other oxygen sensors, uh, unless I already showed you that. Yeah, because there's two oxygen sensors, different part numbers, but they're the same thing. So there's two charges of 692.94. All right, we're back, come back. Hi, how are you? It is 819, I'm headed over to Kenan's house. We're gonna do some gift exchanging. I've got Michael behind me, he's on his way over too. Uh, yeah, it's only three days after Christmas. Usually Ken and I are way late doing this, but this year it's not too bad. So we'll get over there and see what worthless crap he thought I would like. Be careful, be careful. To watch like I be have. careful, Kenan. Oh no! <laughs> I think I put my thumbnail around the whole thing last time. All right, we should explain what we're doing. This is yeah. Michael's 15-inch MacBook need Pro. Need wait, wait, uh, year. Is this a late 10 or something like that? Yep. Yeah, they need to know. They're, no, they're they the vlogateers. They need to know everything yeah, I do. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. Right. They'll figure it out. Right. Right. Well, he, his, it his is dicked. Are your videos public on, on yeah, your channel? Yeah, they're called, you search for Dickard. D-I-C-K-E-R-E-D -E -E on my channel. Actually, they're like the latest. latest okay. Thing. Well, he gets uh, graphics issues, so we're just going to troubleshoot and replace the RAM and see if that does graphics anything. Graphics instability. All right, this is what the behind the scenes of Tekken 5 looks like. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is done on a Mac, and yes, it's running Windows. If I could get if I could get Adobe Audition on a PC, or on a Mac, I can't. I, I could, but it costs $79. But you're running... Um, Seven. Uh, seven. Well, obviously, you're running Edition in Parallels, right? No, I'm just. Well, I can. Oh, it's boot camp. Uh, yeah, but I can run it in Parallels if I want. Okay, so you know there's, the thing where you can run it. There's what Tekken Five looks like. Thanks to you. Good work. Oh yeah, and look, it's been warning me that it's not genuine. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, it's oh, dead. Oh, it's oh, not. It. No. It's dead. Okay, so it. this is what I did. This is what Ryan, this is Ryan's uh, well, accomplishment for the day. I, he shoved one of my screwdrivers through an entire block of wood, making a lovely hole, which we can see through. Wait, no, you can't. Yes, we can. Okay, sure. How about now? No, not as much. 
But it's I did that, it. That wood's gotta be like two, two feet thick, That's right? That's my it's only like... tool. Yeah, two feet, definitely. Yeah, Friggin' rates it is. All right, guys. Um, 1.04 a.m. here. Um, a couple things I want to talk about. I was over at Ken's with Ken and Mike for a couple hours this afternoon, evening, night. It's a good time. We exchanged Christmas presents. Um, I don't think anybody knows except him now and Mike. Um, I got him the Apple Magic Mouse. He does a lot of editing in Final Cut Pro and I've tried editing with just the trackpad and the precision that the trackpad gives is good but nowhere near that of a Magic Mouse. So I really hope that he can use that and uh, he didn't have one so that will be good for him. He got me, um, I'll go get it, the BMW M tie which I had looked at and it looks like carbon fiber. It's really cool. Um, I've seen it at the dealer a couple times. When I was there today I looked at it and uh, this will look Really nice with a white shirt, bring it back into the light. Uh, but it looks like this, really cool. Thank you, Canon. Let's see what was made. Made in Italy, I already knew that, because it says here somewhere, yeah, made in Italy. So that's neat. That and, and the wait, there's more. I'm trying to be quiet, people are sleeping. Come over here, check this out, check it out. Check it out. Those of you who may not know, I truly adore bacon. Check it out. He got strawberry flamer, flamer, wow, strawberry flavor, gummy bacon, freaking right, and, and Moe's milk bar. Oh yeah, 45% deep milk chocolate with hickory smoked uncured bacon. Well, that will be very interesting, to say the least, so we'll have to try those later. And uh, that will be uh, another addition to the Yacht Club tie collection. Now one of the second thing I wanted to talk about, yesterday's vlog. Um, it was a longer one. It's about 450 megs. I think it's like 10 minutes or something, 9 minutes, or a longer one. And I uploaded it last night. The upload finished, just as it usually does. Successful. It gave me a link. I waited till it was done processing. I killed the Firefox application, and I went to bed. So why didn't it show up? And I got a whole bunch of comments today. Where's yesterday's vlog? Well, I was over at Cannon's house by the time I started reading emails and doing comments today. I was pretty busy. I was at Dave Walter till about uh, noon, I think, 12.30. Then we went to lunch. I came back here. I had to do a whole bunch of crap. Um, then I went to his house and just chilled. So uh, that vlog is re-uploading now. I don't know what happened, but that'll be up by the time you see this. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this up tonight just because that's one. I got up at 8 something today and I need to get to bed and feed the cat because he needs some foods. But uh, this is going to be a longer one too. I talked a lot about the car. So give you the information if anybody actually cares. I'd probably make a video on the E39 source. It's a very common problem. I did some further research. The carbon blockage, I really hope the procedure works. If it doesn't, then phew, I'm not pulling the engine. So whatever. It does not affect the health or anything of the engine. It just won't pass e-check. Um, I bought the BMW Peak Analyzer, the engine analyzer, so I can put that on there and turn the light off for hopefully a couple days and then just have it checked or have the e-check done uh, then for emissions check. So. That is it. I apologize. Long-winded video, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Actually, today. I'm not wearing a watch, so I don't know the date. I think it'll be the 29th, Thursday the 29th. That engine analyzer thing is supposed to come today. I'm not going to use it and test it because I don't want to reset stuff, so then when I take it to BMW next Tuesday, they'll be like, what the hell happened? So I'll just wait till after um, these repairs over the next week or two. All right, that's it. Talk to you tomorrow. Good night, guys.